So today, last week of the series, How Are You Doing? Looking at Mental Health, I'm asking you the question, how or exactly, or do you want to change? Right? Do you want to change? But before we get going, I want to lead us through a fitness class. Who, who, who knew they were coming for CrossFit this morning? How many of you understand that right now is today's Sunday fitness class? Who's ready to do some burpees this morning? But check it out. If you came today for the Sunday fitness class, first thing you got to do is show up, right? You here, you showed up for class. Just give someone a high five, man. Say, way, way to show up today. Number two, if you're going to do a fitness class with us, you got to bring your gear. Who brought your gear for fitness? Did you bring your gear? I got my gear here. I got my backpack. I got my water. I got my protein. I got my HDH. No, I got my, uh, I got my backpack here. And I know since we're going to be doing some, some uh, programming here today, we, we usually start out with a warm-up which we just did. You guys didn't know, but I had you guys warming up a little bit so you could do some exercise. You just got to move to warm up, right? But we don't just like, this isn't like go Globo Fitness where you just walk into LA Fitness or Planet Fitness. We actually have a plan for you. Like if you come do CrossFit with us, it's not just random stuff and you just come and move, but we actually have four and eight week plans to help you develop, to help you get stronger, to help you set goals, to help you grow, to help you realize where you start, you can actually measure your growth and your strength and your fitness. Is that cool? How many of you just wander through life thinking, man, I, I don't know if I'm growing, I don't know if I'm getting fitter. You just use the, the, the scale. By the way, if you're measuring your level of fitness and your level of happiness by the scale, you're missing the mark. Amen? It's about growing, it's about doing things to help you feel healthier and holier. So today we're gonna to do a warm up, and then we're gonna do back squats. Who wants to do some back squats today? And we're gonna do your back squats, one by three, sets of three reps at 60%, 65, 70, and 75% of your one rep max. Who knows what I'm talking about? Uh, Nicole, I know you know what I'm talking about. Most of you are like, what are you talking about? But this is the plan. And then after we're done weightlifting, we're gonna get, we're gonna build our strength. We're gonna do it properly under the, under the eyes of a trainer and a coach. I'm gonna teach you how to lift properly, not just wander in and be like, hurt your back, hurt your knees. But if we can actually train you to get your hips below your knees, to keep your chest up, to use the correct muscles, you're gonna grow faster and you're gonna get, you're gonna get stronger, quicker, and there's a plan in place, cool? And then after that, we're gonna do some metabolic conditioning. Some, some cardio. Who wants to do some cardio this morning? Not too many. But we're going to do three rounds for time. We're going to do a 200-meter run out to the fence and back. You're going to come in, and you're going to do 40 crossovers. So wait, what's a crossover? You're supposed to, like, get your jump ropes out. Who brought their gear? And do some crossovers. Anybody bring their jump ropes? Okay, yeah, yeah, you forgot. I don't. Just kidding. We're going to do 40 crossovers, 20 burpees. And you're gonna do three rounds of that and we're gonna do it for time. And the stimulus of this workout today is seven, is eight to 10 minutes, which means I want you to be done with that workout in eight to 10 minutes to hit the correct stimulus that we have for you. Cool? The time cap will be 12 minutes. If it takes you longer than 12 minutes, you're done. You can stop there. Cool? Who's ready to start? I'm just kidding. You show up. You've got your gear, and you've got a plan, and you've got a coach. I'm a certified coach, multiple levels, multiple things, weightlifting certified, and I'm also a champion CrossFitter. I don't say this pridefully, but I won the nationals in CrossFit in my age group, and I'm getting ready to go to basically the worlds in two weeks and taking a team here because I love it. I love to train. I'm not just trying to be a great athlete but I'm training. You can't just try to make things happen. You have to train. So within CrossFit, I don't just show up. I've got a training program. I've got the gear. I use programming, someone to help me 
four and eight week cycles to grow, to change, to study, to get better. And it's the same thing with our spiritual life. Think about it. Do you really want to change? Because just trying is not going to get it done. Do you really want to change like Jesus when he talked to the paralytic, to the dude in John chapter 5 when he walked in, he saw this guy that had been paralyzed for 38 years. He came up to him and asked him, do you want to get well? How, doesn't that seem a little harsh to talk to a dude who's paralyzed, laying on a mat, begging for food all these years, everybody knew him. Don't you think that's a little hard? Jesus is like, well, do you want to get well? And I think he's asking the same thing of each and every one of us. Do you really want to change? Because I think a lot of us, we don't really want to change. We might try here and there, but do we actually have a disciplined plan and commitment of change? Because if you really want to change, you got to have a plan. And you got to have a coach. And you got to have people investing in you. You can't do it alone. One of our little sayings around here, I can't do life alone. Would you say it with me? I can't do life alone. But those of us in our addiction, those of us who are wrestling with these destructive coping behaviors and substances, we're isolated, we're alone, we're not letting people speak into our life, we're keeping God out, even though we know he loves us. And you know the people around you love you and you know your behaviors are destructive and breaking the intimacy and connection in your life, except you keep returning to the same old thing. Like Paul asked, and like we talked about a couple weeks ago, Paul said, why do I keep doing the very thing I don't want to do? It's not me doing it. We need to change. We need to grow. So today, the message is about training. We got to learn to train. You don't change by trying. How many of you believe that's true? Like, well, I tried to get better. I tried not to do this. I tried not to do that. How about this? How many of you want to win in life? Like you want to win. I know Christians are like, we're not competitive. We're not going to talk about winning and losing. But I mean, how many of you like want to feel good? You want to win at life. You want to win at being a good parent. You want to win at loving your kids and your family. You want to win at representing God in every area of your life. You want to grow as a healthy person in every area of your life. How many of you would like to win in that area? That's what I'm talking about. And scripture's clear. If you look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. And by the way, this screen was not a winner because it went out today. That's why we only have one winning screen, okay? Just in case you thought, oh, they didn't turn the screen on. We understand, but we're still winning because we have Jesus, even if we got one screen, right? Paul didn't say in this verse, I run to finish the race. He didn't say, I'm running for fun. He didn't say, I'm running to look like Usain Bolt. He said, you run to win. And we're running this race of life to win. To win for the things that matter the areas I want to change and grow in. Because you're going to want to win in what really matters. The problem is, sometimes we get our priorities out of alignment, don't we? What matters really doesn't matter. And then we end up losing because we've invested our time and our training into the things that don't matter. Whether you realize it or not, you are training for something. What are you training for? What are you spending your time doing? What are you investing your time in? Who are you letting influence you? You're being trained. Is it of the world or is it godly training? Is it receiving Christ? Is the Holy Spirit guiding you? This is the training we want to have. We run to win. You know the great theologian, Ricky Bobby? He probably stated it best. He said, if you ain't first, you're last. This guy, a better theologian than most of us, right? If you ain't first, you're last. How many of you have seen that movie? Oh, I pray, pray for all the, the sinners here today. Actually, I got, it's one of our favorite Christmas movies, by the way. Anyway, so, the edited version. 
We run to win. So why is it, I ask you this morning, why is it so many of us feel like we're not winning at life? Why do we feel like, man, here I am again, and I should be further along, and man, I, here I am in the same situation over and over. I'm not winning in my spirituality. Man, I really should be doing more. It should be something more for God. And I'm not really winning in my marriage or in my relationship. I'm not really winning as a parent, like succeeding. Anybody here feel that way? How many feel like, man, I just, I should be in a better, I should be someone different by now. But here I am struggling with the same old things. Same old way I spend my time and really don't feel like there's much good happening in my life. Anybody feel that way from time to time and maybe even right now? It's, it's really difficult to spend our time that way. And why aren't we winning? Why aren't we changing? Here's the point. You've been trying, circle that word in your notes, you've been trying for too long. What do you mean, Scott? You've been trying to do better things for too long. What is trying? You've been trying to start praying more often. You've been trying to eat better. You've been trying to be more present with your kids. You've been trying to be a better employee on the job. You've been trying not to relapse. You've been trying not to be judgmental of people that you think you're better than. Uh Uh-oh. You've been trying to be something you're not. It doesn't work, does it? Have any of you ever tried something like, well, I tried, didn't work out, like positive things, I tried. Tried to make it happen, tried to stop procrastinating, tried to go to bed at a decent time, tried to not eat everything at Thanksgiving like I did. I was trying not to, but man, I don't know about you guys, I'll say I had a little slip, a little relapse on this weekend, just full bore, three or four plates, trying to count my macros or off, totally off the, play, off the charts. Talk about that in another series, another lesson. You've been trying too long, you guys. You've been trying to change the outward behaviors. You've been trying to change how you're perceived by people. You've been trying to change your actions instead of allowing training to change your heart, instead of allowing God to change your heart. Real and lasting and permanent change does not come from behavior modification. Real and lasting change comes through spiritual transformation. It's an inside job. How many of you realize that by now? We've been talking about it. Your beliefs drive your emotions, which drive your behaviors. And everything we're trying to change, at least most of it is like our behaviors and this and that. And we wonder why things aren't changing because we'll stop, we'll get sober in one area, we'll have abstinence, but we didn't have this change of heart, the spiritual transformation. So we inevitably, we go back to doing those same old things or we just switch seats on this Titanic. We go from doing one thing, we stop that, but we just keep medicating that behavior. We just keep doing these things until we realize the Titanic is going down, right? Behavior modification doesn't work. Real and lasting change isn't behavior modification, it's spiritual transformation. What is your identity? How is it tied to this? Why do you do what you do? You do what you do because of what you believe. Say it with me. You do what you do because of what you believe. How many of you believe that? How many of you are like, I don't know what I believe? Like really, Pastor Scott, like Scott, buddy, coach, whatever you are up there. um, I don't know what I believe. And I would look at you, if you came to me and said that, and I would say, show me your life. Show me your actions, show me where you spend your time and your money and I'll show you what you believe. You don't even have to tell me. You don't even have to tell me what you believe. I can show you through your emotions and your behaviors who you are and what you're really about. You can say you're one thing. You can post on Instagram pictures and social media and all this really cool stuff, but anybody who spends time with you and knows the facade that gets put out there being something we're really not, because you can control that, can't you? 
Anybody here trying to control? Come on, come on, who's, who's honest as is? That's what I'm talking about. We got some real players in the house today. We know you guys are pretending. We all wear disguises and masks. This whole journey of t- spiritual transformation is removing that and becoming fully authentic with God and learning to trust him and be vulnerable so that he can change you so that you turn the power and your will over to God and he transforms you from the inside out. How many of you, how many of you have really turned your life over to God and let him change you from the inside out? It's hard. It's really, really difficult. You do what you do because of what you believe. Based on what you want to become or who you want to become, what number one habit do I need to change, to start doing? Here's my sermon to you today. It's the stop trying and start training. Stop trying and start training. In your mental health, just get an assessment, understand who you are, stop trying to change and get into a plan, a commitment of change. Stop trying, start changing. When Paul wrote to the Corinthians, they would have been listening, or you know, they, as someone read this, they would have been listening, they would have understood what Paul was talking about when he talked about running the race. When he talked about um, athletics, when he talked about the Olympics and all this stuff, because Uh, In Greece, they hosted the Olympics every four years. So they would have known these metaphors that he's using about hosting the Olympics, about running to win, the competitive metaphors. They would have understood what he said. And every two years, they'd have local competitions. You guys have probably seen the pictures of chariot races. You guys heard of where the Olympic Games came from? And you know that they would not only have chariot races, but they would do wrestling, they would do boxing, poetry, they would run, they would have skateboarding, yes, snowboarding, gaming. They would do poetry. I kind of picture Mario out there throwing down his bars, wicked bars, he calls himself, you know, rapping out in the street. I don't know what it was like. But they would have understood when Paul was using these metaphors, like, oh, we get what he's saying because that's part of our culture. And when we preach, we need to preach even today into our context and our culture. That's why I use personal experiences, things that are happening in our culture to help illustrate the truths of the Bible. Because a lot of this was not written in our culture and it was actually addressed to specific cultures. So hopefully you understand that's part of the Bible and the way we preach and exegete the scriptures is to not only give you the historical setting, but all the contemporary, like current ways that it applies to our lives. So Paul says this, check it out, it's in the scriptures. I'm telling you, hopefully I don't have to convince you. Here we go. Don't you realize, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win, check it. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should do. When Paul was using these metaphors, he was not just talking, he was talking about the spiritual life. He wasn't just talking about athletes running a race. Do you know these Olympic athletes back in the day when this was going on, they would train for 10 months. And they would train hard. And they would go 10 months on an, an intense training regimen, strict diet, no wine, no junk food. And the runners, if you've seen it or you've heard of it, they ran, they didn't wear clothes, completely nude. And it wasn't like an erotic type of way necessarily, it was so that you could see the tone, that you could see the fluidity of the body. You could see that they had truly trained. They were trying to master their body, the physical part of their life. It was completely crazy. There were no restrictions. Their motivation was to win. And they would have wrestling in that day, in the heat of the day, 100 degrees out, they're out there wrestling just to show that they can prove. Whether it was snowing, all weather conditions, they would also wrestle 
bulls, horses, and even lions to prove the level of their training and their strength. Is that crazy? That's what went down here. So all the people in, around Corinth would understand what Paul was talking about when he used these metaphors about running to win. And he used it for the spiritual life. S check it out. Listen, scripture, nowhere in here, scripture tells you to try. Scripture never tells you to try anything. It doesn't tell you to try to be godly, does it? Just try to be godly. It doesn't. Scripture says this, 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. Instead, train. Train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. How beautiful is that? Training in your spiritual life is very important. What is the difference between trying and training? Trying, check it out, trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment. Well, I tried, that didn't work, I'm out of here. I went to a couple, you know, Bible studies, that kind of sucked. I didn't understand what they're talking about, I'm out of here. I, I tried to hit church once in a while, but you know, I gotta sleep in, you know, we got some football to watch. I tried to love my neighbor, you know, but they're, I don't know, you know, they're, they're kind of hard to love. You think your neighbor's hard to love? Look in the mirror. I know I'm very hard to love. I'm surprised my neighbors even like me sometimes. Who knows? You know, I don't, maybe they don't. They don't like it when we used to lift weights in our garage because I dropped the weights on the floor. Boom, neighbor came over and was like, hey man, it was during COVID. What are you doing in there? It's shaking our house. And I'm like, I thought it was just our garage. He's like, no, you're dropping your barbells. You need to stop doing that. The first time we've lived there for 20 years, my neighbor got mad. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I went over to apologize. The other neighbors, they were very kind. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't need to be shaking the neighborhood. It was actually Gwena, it wasn't me. She was the one dropping the heavy weights. Just so we know. Trying to change Trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment. It's half-hearted. When you just try, it gives you permission to fail. I tried, you know, it's no good. There's always a way out. You know, I tried to read my Bible. I tried to hit a couple meetings in my recovery, but it just wasn't working out. You know, I tried to be faithful to my wife, but man, she was so good looking. I just, it just couldn't, I just couldn't resist getting loaded, you know? I ended up in this situation, I just slipped. You know how many times I've heard I just slipped? You don't just slip. You make an intentional choice to compromise because you're not in training, because you're trying to do recovery. You're trying to follow Christ. You're trying to be a good parent. You need to be training as one who's already that person. Trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment. Training is wholehearted commitment to achieve a specific result. Wholehearted commitment to achieve a specific result. When you're training, you're committed. When you're training, you train whether you feel like it or not. Well, I don't feel like it today, so I'm not gonna train. Well, I don't feel like it. That's not what people in training do. That's what people who are try are doing. Are we perfect? No, but even when you're training and you make a mistake, you, you have some recovery days, you keep going because you're training to become something new. Who you are, you're training for that. I've said this before, practice, pra training is practice. When we go through these movements in our fitness, fitness classes, most of the people who come in cannot do the movements as prescribed. What do we do? Everyone does the same workout. We modify it, we scale it. Instead of doing push-ups this way, we put you on the wall, we put you on a box, and we say, just do the movement, we're gonna do it together. We want you to fail. 
When you're training, you want to go to failure sometimes, but you have to have the community to come lift you up and say, yes, you got to push it to your limit to get to this place where you know where you're at. As is church, just like our fitness classes for the youth and all this, it's a safe place to fail. Because the people who are walking this out with you, they're on the journey too. If you could ever find a safe place to fail and be who you truly are, you will start to grow. Why do you think AA works? Why do you think 12 steps work? It's anonymous. You go in, you're not judged. Everybody's equal. You share the stories and stories and you're not, people aren't going, oh my God, you did what? Walk into any church and share a little bit of your addiction story and you'll have people look at you like, what kind of monster would do that sort of thing? I've had people say that to me and then realize I'm the guest speaker that day. We do some crazy things when we're in our addiction. We do some crazy things when you're not in your addiction, you know what I'm saying? We need a safe place because we need to be able to practice. Practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. If you want to become something new, if you want real and lasting permanent change, you have to train, you have to practice, you have to stumble, you have to fall, you gotta make mistakes, but you need the community to help build you up and help you make it further along. Would you guys agree with that? Feelings. When you're training, you don't act according to your feelings, you act according to your commitment. Too many marriages, too many parents, too many people act according to their feelings and not towards their commitments. Feelings change, you guys. Commitments sometimes change, but they're agreed upon with you and whoever you're training with. So, two things that I want to leave with you today. When you're training, because who wants to train? Everyone should raise their hands. Everyone should have some form of training, whether it's physical, spiritual, hopefully spiritual and physical, all of it. All, every area of life should become uh, a holistic approach to your life with God and others, okay? When you're training, like I said earlier with the fitness, you get the gear. With my fitness, I talked about all this stuff I have and other things. You get the gear to train. You get the shoes, the belts, the short shorts if you want to run fast, all this other stuff, jump ropes, all these things. If you want to train, you get the gear. You also create a game plan. That's what's missing in many of our lives. We don't have a game plan. You find a community. You find a coach. You find someone to help you program your life, program your discipleship, in, your, in, in fitness, I have multiple coaches. I work with coaches. I have programming that I follow that tells me this is how you train as an elite athlete, your age, your condition. I don't have to guess every day what I do. It's mapped out for me four to eight weeks at a time. Here's the days you take off. Here's when you do weightlifting. Here's when you focus on training and practicing your gymnastics. Here's when you work on double unders. Here's when you do handstand walks. Oh, you can't do those yet? Here are the modifications. I don't have to make it up on my own. I train other people now because I've been trained as a coach. I write programming for people because they come, they know he's legit. He's competent in these things. Do you understand you need a plan? And you need a coach? and you need community to get this done. So what about your spiritual life? Spiritual training we call discipleship. Who's ever heard the word discipleship? Discipleship is spiritual training. Apprenticeship, mentorship. Recovery calls it sponsorship. In the church world, we call it discipleship. You wanna become a disciple of Jesus. You wanna learn from Jesus, so you learn from the people that are already like Jesus. Those are called disciple makers. Would you guys say disciple makers? Disciple makers. Here at As Is, we have a vision for our discipleship. It's this, please listen. The, the vision for what we wanna create, because Jesus said, therefore go and make disciples. 
It's not just about having big church services. It's about each one of us becoming disciples of Jesus that make disciples of Jesus. Our vision for this is this, for as a church, helping each other follow Jesus as a healthy family in every area of life. Helping each other follow Jesus as a healthy family in every area of life. That healthy family part is where it gets a little sticky because we all bring our families of origin into this big faith family and it gets spicy. How many of you say, even my family of origin gets spicy, it's a little crazy. How many of you guys' Thanksgiving meals were a little out there? I don't even wanna know. You add a little like additive, like alcohol and drugs and politics and religion, it gets to really crazy. And then let's say you got hundreds of people come to a church and it gets crazy wild. But it's beautiful because God has brought us all together as his children to love each other and love him. Even if you are a Ducks fan, you belong in the family of God. Get behind me, Satan. As a Christian, if you follow this training model, you get the gear. Man, you come to church, this is what we call big circle. You come to church, you see all these people, you get the gear. You get your Bible or your Bible app, version. There's all kinds of ways to get equipped with God's word. You get a journal. For some of you who like to journal, you can journal. You can get a hard copy. There's online journals. You can get your worship play set. You hear songs in here, maybe you're new to Christ. You can go and ask others, what are your favorite worship songs? And you listen to Elevation Worship or get online Pandora or whatever. Instead of listening, well, just listen to some godly stuff once in a while that lifts you up, okay? Your prayer journal. Then you get a game plan. This is where most Christians miss it. They think being a disciple is going to church on Sundays. When you ask somebody, are you a Christian? I go to East Hill Church. I'm like, I can't ask you what church you go to. Are you a Christian? I go to As Is Church. Dude, I don't make you a Christian. It don't make you a Christian to be here today. I mean, I'm, we're grateful we're here together, but it doesn't mean you're a Christian, you're practicing following Jesus. You need discipleship. You need to become like Christ. You need others to walk alongside you. You must have a game plan. We have game plans for you. We have spiritual assessments for you. We have a whole division, a whole program, a whole ministry in our church that's geared towards every single one of us becoming disciples that make disciples. We call big circle, which is this, like we all come together. And then we have medium circle, which is like small groups, Bible studies, recovery groups, all the things that we come in Genesis process, parenting group that Juan does, marriage, marriage groups. We've done divorce care, grief share in the past, all these different things to help us grow. And then we have small circle, which is one-on-one -on -one discipleship, where we have a team of people who've been discipled and use our small circle curriculum to help take people one-on-one -on -one through a process of discipleship. Many of them are here today. Would you guys raise your hands if you're one of our stand-up, if you're one of our disciple makers? Look around. Some of them are here today. These are people who are committed to God, who've been through a discipleship process, who can help coach you and train you one-on-one -on -one in a discipleship model. We have big group, medium group, small group. You need to know that this is available. And you need to know the expectation of a Christ follower goes past Sunday morning or whatever day you go to church. Man, I feel like I'm gonna have another stroke if I have to keep saying this for another 30 years, but I probably will. That's not what gave me a stroke. I, I had a stroke a few years back. That's maybe why I'm a little weird. Well, no, that's probably before that. But anyways, look, we say, as I wrap this up, a few things about our discipleship model. Connect, grow, serve, share, give. You connect through big circle, medium circle, the stuff I talked about. You grow as you become a disciple, as you have a game plan. We have game plans for you, how you're gonna show up. This sort of stuff is fitness. You need this level of commitment every day 
for your discipleship. If you really want to grow, become disciplined in who God is. Grow, serve, find a ministry to serve. And one way to express your gifts and to learn who you are is to serve in a, in a ministry related to the church or somehow in the community. Share your story with others. There's nothing more powerful than to go to somebody and say, God is so good. Look at what he's done to my family. Look at what he's done to my life. Look at how he's transformed every area of my life. Man, you, you might want to check that out. They might be like, well, get away from me, homie. I, I don't know. And you're like, hey, man, I'm just sharing the hope I found because I was hopeless before Christ chased me down. You know what I'm saying? There's so many ways that we can share that. And finally, those, I want you to leave you with this point. Those who change and Tim, you guys can take this out now as the worship team gets ready to come back up. Those who change and those who win and succeed in the things that really matter, all of this that I've talked about today, training, coaching, the lifestyle, it becomes part of your identity. What do you mean, Scott? When you really change and you become, you're becoming something new, that change that you're moving toward becomes part of who you are. Well, what do you mean, Scott? Well, when I'm done trying and I start changing, instead of saying, well, I'm trying to be a better parent, we say, I am a good parent in training. Oh, I'm trying to stay clean and sober. I'm trying... No, I'm a person in active recovery that's in training. You're not trying anything. You're training to become who you already are. Oh, everyone, Christian, I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to be loving. I'm trying to uh, show the fruit of the Spirit. God's already changed you from the inside out. You need to believe it and start training towards and believing who he says you are because it's already who you are. It's already part of who you are when you believe that, hey, yes, for me, like with fitness and stuff, instead of, well, I, I think I can do this stuff. No, I, I am. I might be old, and I might be, when I started this, obese, and I might not be able to do a pull-up, and I might not be able to do any of this stuff, but I'm gonna, I am an athlete. I'm going to keep trying. And over a very short period of time, I started to believe it. I started to face my fears, started to be with the community that said, you can do it, Scott. You can do it every day. If you're with a community that loves you, like we are with the fitness, the kids, and in our own adult lives, every day in group fitness with a community, people come alongside you and say, you can do it. Come on, two more burpees. Come on, Scott, two more prayers. We got this, God's gonna answer. Come on, all this encouragement. You're like, man, it changes you. If you're not in the game and you're not training, you're missing out on something amazing. Not just trying to make it to church. Man, I'm a Christian. I'm in training. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be a commitment. I'm gonna be someone that people can trust. When you just try to do things, no one can trust you. When you don't show commitment to the things you've committed to, how could anyone ever trust you? But when you're training and you're involved and you're in the game, you're like, man, I trust that person. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be trusted and respected than loved and liked. Think about that. There's a lot of people I respect that I might not like so much. I'm like, hey, at least they're a person of their word. If you just want everybody to like you, you'll say yes to everything and please everybody. I'd rather be disliked sometimes, but see, hey, he's the real deal. You can trust that guy. At least, he, at least he gives it to you straight. Wouldn't you rather be around somebody like that? I know I would. So in your life today, with the person that you want to become, where do you need to move from trying to training? What is it for you? I'm gonna pray with you if you need prayer. If you need someone to walk this out with you, we have a prayer team, a worship team. We have people who will pray with you up here. They can come up now. 
I'm going to pray for you and we're going to sing together. But just think about where do I need to move from just trying to training? What area of my life do I really need to say, Lord, I surrender. I give it all to you. So, Father God, we love you. We thank you that we can walk this out together. God, you've been so good to us. Even when we didn't recognize it, you were loving us. You were wooing us. You were showing us how much you loved us, God, when you sent your son Jesus to live among us. You didn't just let us fall on our own. You said, hey, I want to go be with my people. And Jesus, you came and you are the Lord and Savior and you lived among us and you showed us what it looks like to be a whole person, Lord Jesus. You're such a great example to us. You are the ultimate trainer. You are our guide. You are our Lord and Savior. I pray for each person here today, Lord, that they would understand that they need you in their lives, that they need each other. And Father God, I pray that you would send safe people, people that they can learn to trust, people who are for them, people that are just specifically there to love them and help them grow. God, I pray that you send those people into their lives and into my life as well. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us favor in this community. I pray more people would come to know your love and your heart for them and that they would not be distracted by all the stuff we see on social media and all the negativity of the world. All I know, God, is that you are good and your love endures forever. And I pray that we would be people who would be committed to you as Christ followers from here to eternity. Lord, please bless us as a faith family. Give us favor in this community and in this world. May your love shine bright in this dark and broken world. In Jesus' name, 